Today's master class is with someone whose cinema has left an cultural impact, not just in India but across the border. 25 years back, he made his debut with Kuch Kuch Hota Hai, and little did he know that 16th October 1998 will change his and our lives forever. So, ladies and gentlemen, can we all put our hands together for Karan Johar? Congratulations, firstly, for 25 years. Thank you. Can't believe it's been 25 years. Uh, my God. 20. Huh? What? 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 Silver Jubilee. Huh? I should have worn my shiny silver jacket and arrived. Uh, silver Jubilee. My God. I I feel like that was a different era. I felt like I I feel like I was a different person. Like it doesn't feel like when I see like some making clippings. Um, and you know a lot of those. Uh, unfortunately. Uh, in the deluge, uh, we had a go down in Mahalakshmi, and all without any backups. Unfortunately, a lot of our making footage, a lot of our stills, a lot of those memories during the making of Kuch Kuch Hota just went. We have nothing. We have nothing. We had so many, um, you know, so much BTS and so many behind the scene interviews, moments captured. You know that we were doing it like the AD team was doing it. We had nothing, and you know those days we weren't smart enough to have a backup, which was silly of us. But like, so unfortunately, I have nothing. But the memories are intact. They entrenched in my in my in my memory bank. Yeah. So firstly, thank you again, sir, for attending this Pink Villa Masterclass. Thank you for having me. So you know, my first question to you is: You started shooting for Kuch Kuch Hota Hai probably when you were at the 25 years old, I think. 24. 24 years old. Do you remember the process of putting this entire setup together? It's it was one of the biggest ensemble film ever. So. Oh God, everyone's seen the film here, right? Uh, okay, there must be somebody who hasn't seen it. Put your hand up. <laughs> there, see. There, I was right. There has to be that. It's the Gen Z kids. I have one, two, three, four. Do me a favor, please watch it. Please watch it. Please watch it. Uh, it's available uh, on Netflix and Amazon, and I think uh, you might have a good time watching it. You know, especially after our conversation. Uh, let me tell you, it was very bizarre. Um, I was in AD on Dilwale Dulhaniya Le Jayenge, um, and uh, it was in one of those moments. You know, Shah Rukh. Uh, and I, you know, I got really close during the making of the film, and you know, I was much, of, I was lost and scared on the sets of that film because I had never been on a film set prior to that. Um, and it was Aditya Chopra that actually made me become an AD, and he convinced my family. And because my, I was all set to go somewhere else to study, and my mother was really worried that this was not the profession for me. And she, my father thought that my temperament wasn't cut out. To be in the movie, she says you're too soft-natured, and you know I don't know what she thought that would happen to me when I entered Bollywood. Uh, so um, somehow the other Adi convinced her, and you know I began my journey as an AD. And when I joined in as an AD, I wanted to be a costume designer. So my first assignment was to do Shah Rukh's clothes, um, and that's how I actually got close to Shah Rukh, uh, you know, in the process. And then one day in Switzerland, when we were shooting Tujhe Dekha. Uh, not Tujhe Dekha, what am I saying? calling Tujhe Dekha? Yeah, Tujhe Dekha, Tujhe Dekha, I'm sorry. Yeah. Kuch, kuch, tujhe, it's all blood. Tujhe Dekha on the top of a mountain in Switzerland. Um, we were waiting for Kajal actually um, to get into costume and come. And he looked at me and he said, you know, when you do your first film, I want to do it as um, an actor. And I had like half experience on the making of that film. So I was like, he's just being polite because it's cold. Um, and you know, everyone's missing home. Everyone's being nice to each other. So I was like, yeah, 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 of course. Uh, and then Kajal joined in and she's saying, what are you talking about? And Shahrukh said, you know, if Karan does his first film, I'll do it. She said, yeah, then so will I, it'll be fun. And it was just left at that. And I was like, I went back and told Adi, like, you know, they're just being sweet. And like, you know, why would anyone want to do a film with me after one film of experience? Like, I even, I don't know if I'm equipped. When I got back from the outdoor, Shah Rukh called my dad and uh, he said, you know, he called my father Tom Uncle, we don't know why, uh, <clears throat> and he said, Tom Uncle, uh, my next film after Duplicate, because he was already du doing Duplicate for my dad, he was like, that film I will do which Karan will direct, um, and I'll start that in October 1997. So my father was like, but like Karan ko kuch pata pata to hai nahi. Abhi us, abhi AD hai. Usko paanch chhe saal lagenge. Uske baad bhi dekhenge agar wo karna chahta hai. He said, "Nee, aapka beta director hai. Aur main kar lunga." Usse bolo, bas kahani le aaye. So then my mother was like, "You don't know anything. What is Sharu talking about?" So I said, "I don't know. He's just being sweet, I suppose." But when the film released in October, it released October 19th, uh, 20, uh, 19, 1995, and uh, or, or was it 20th? 
one of these days, 20th, 20th. Um, the very next week, he followed up with me and he was shooting for Chahat. And uh, he was like, come and tell me what story you had. And I had no story. I had no story. But I lied to him and I said I did. Because I was like, I don't want to lose this opportunity. He was like, come to Jaipur. And I went to Jaipur. He was shooting with Pooja for a song for Bhat Sab. And uh, I just randomly, while flying to Jaipur, I thought of this scene between um, a father and daughter, you know, in this jam. The scene that is there between Shah Rukh and... I just thought, I narrated that moment to him. And he's like, okay, write the whole film. I went and I took a year to write Kuch Kuch Hota Hai and it was first two stories which I merged into one and um, I narrated it to them in April 1997 to Shah Rukh and Kajal and me and uh, and nobody else had heard it and I really thought that they'd throw me out you know literally after that narration because I didn't know what I was narrating uh, but at the end of the film he was like yeah we start October and uh, that's what we did we started October the big struggle happened in casting Tina and then Aman, which was Salman and Rani's roles. So for Tina, I went to about eight main lead actresses and all of them said no. Um, I first went to Tina herself, Twinkle, because I was very close to her and I wrote the character keeping her in mind, but she said no and subsequently many, but every, everyone literally said no to me. And I said, now I'll have to wear that orange skirt and walk into college because like, no one's gonna do that part. Uh, Ironically, Aditya Chopra had seen the promo of a film called Raja Ki Aigi Bharat and he called me and he said, you should go and meet Rani Mukherjee. I think she's going to be a star. So I met her and narrated the film and uh, she also said, give me two days to think. So I was like, you know, now ye to ho gaya, koi nahi karega. Uh, but two days later, she called me and she said, how will you convince an audience that Shah Rukh is in love with me over Kajal? Because Shah Rukh and Kajal were the dream couple at that time. Um, and I was like, I, I, it's my first film, I'll do everything. I'll work very hard to convince. So she said, I'm going with your conviction. And she came on and literally then I went to everybody else for Salman's role and nobody said yes to me. Um, uh, I met Salman at a party, at Chunky Pandey's party. And he was like, um, you know, only, only an absolutely confident person will do this film and I'm that person. Why don't you come and meet me tomorrow? I went and narrated the film to him. At the first half, he said, I'm doing it. But I said, but Salman, you come in the second half. You have not heard the second half. He's like, uh, no, I don't care. I know where it's going. And uh, I'm doing it. I really like your dad. And I like your energy. And I'm doing the film. And I walked out of there and I was like, Salman Khan is doing this film. And I called up Adi, you know, and he was like, oh my God, the film just got really big. And, you know, there was already Shah Rukh and Kajal. And Rani was this promising new actor. She had done Gulam. And we started shooting in October 1997. Um... With no hiccups, Himesh, uh, the film was ready in July and uh, on my 25th birthday, we were shooting the summer camp portion and it released October 16th and uh, it was just the most surreal moment of my entire life. I, I, I wasn't there actually when the film released. We had some threatening calls at that time. So me and my parents had to fly out. Um, on the opening night itself because for security purposes we just needed to be so I never saw the film in back home at all I used to just have friends who would call me and you know put the phone on the audience towards the audience when Salman enters or any big moment in the film and I would just literally have tears coming down because I wasn't there and I couldn't see it so I, I went to see it in London a couple of times um, but it just didn't feel the same like it's sad that I've not seen Kuch Kuch Hota Hai with an audience with in my country, in just, just when I came back after six weeks, um, it was the award season time, and you know, uh, you won it all. And then, yeah, and like winning those awards, my, I remember holding that first filmfare award, and I was like, I, I couldn't breathe first yeah. because I, because you know, I, it was just like I don't think I can describe that moment because as a child, you've always imagined, you know, being on that stage, winning that that award. Um, seeing your dreams come true. We all have dreams, right? We all want to go somewhere with our lives. Uh, and this was an impossible dream in my head. And when it came true, uh, I was like, I don't think it gets better than this. And I just have to be grateful to the universe for everything that happened. Because when I see the trajectory, I'm like, I don't know how this happened. I was not meant to be here. Aditya Chopra convinces me. Shah Rukh Khan does the film. Kajal does the film. Salman Khan does the film. Rani Mukherjee does the film. The film gets made. It gets, and people kind of like it. Barring the five people here who haven't seen it. Uh, uh, the uh, People liked it and like it kind of grew in pop culture. And like I, 
I really still feel like when I wa- I haven't seen the film in a really long time yeah. but I I really don't know how things happened like I don't know when you ask me how the story came to me or any of that I can't give you any explanation just destiny it, it was also just a lot of my love for Hindi cinema yeah. there's so much of Yash Chopra in there there's so much of uh, Suraj Barjatia there's yeah. so much of Raj Kapoor so many influences I've had as a kid I just like for me just that film was like one big dream But so you know you j- like like you said that the casting like Shahrukh came and he said he's doing your film you went to Salman he said he's doing the film without even hearing the second half do you think casting back then was easier and it is much more mechanical now Oh yeah oh my god people were like so much more it was on faith trust and energy yeah. today i'm like actors take too long and take themselves way too seriously yeah. sometimes and i'm like yaar sometimes you got to just take that plunge you know yeah. in those days it was just about the energy between director and actor and yeah. between a, a narration like you know it was just, sometimes we didn't have like do you know i there's no there's no full bound script of kuch kuch hota hai that exists um i used to narrate it i had never written it so when the film released nikhil advani had to write the screenplay down from the film we didn't have a screenplay like i used to write scenes on like those days we weren't even on the computer yeah. we edited uh, we edited on the steen back there was no avid it was like i used to write in hindi on pages and xerox those pages and send them to the actors uh, we used to write those and many a time we like change scenes last minute i would change and add dialogues because it was just like actors were there on good faith it was like you said so much easier and people used to do films for love sometimes yeah today I suppose there's love and lots of money that's required for anyone to do a film. But kuch kuch that I changed the lives of each and every person associated with the film. How did it change for you? Did it add pressure for your second film which you made which was K3G? Yeah, I mean, uh, because the film had achieved, you know, um success and I was very grateful. Um then I think um I remember telling my father that I want to work with Mr. Bachchan, Mrs. Bachchan. Shahrukh Kajal, Hrithik Roshan and Kareena Kapoor and he thought I'd gone mad. He looked at me and he said, "Beta, ek hi picture banao. Teen teen projects mat plan karo." I said, "Nahi, ye sare ek hi film mein hai." So, he was like, "What?" He said, "What is this movie?" So, I was like, "It's a family saga and I really wanted this cast." Um and I went uh one morning with the story to Shahrukh first and he said, "I don't need to know. I'm I'm on for the film." uh went to kajal she was shooting at filmistan studios that's the second meeting and she heard it and she was like i'm on i went to mr bachchan uh met him and he was very gracious and kind and wonderful and then i left mr bachchan's house and i called up jaya aunty and i said i want to meet you she said but you were just here so i was like no i'm coming in a professional capacity so i came back and i narrated the film to her uh, the idea i mean the long form idea of it and she was like i can never say no to you um i went to dugu's house and uh Kahuna Pyare hadn't released but I had a lot of faith in him and he was like really happy and excited to be on and my last meeting of the day was with Poo um uh, uh I met her and she was like I I I mean I said hello and she was on like she was like yeah like we're doing it like I don't want to know the story just tell me you know when you start so uh, the, the interesting part is that I signed all six actors on one day uh it was all on the same day and uh and uh it was the best day of my life and that's how easy it was uh you know it was just wonderful yeah. that actors came on on energy faith trust and belief when the film released the rest is history it's like one of the biggest blockbusters that we have seen till date but karan sir i remember that back in the day you had given an interview where you said that uh, all through the year every in the start first of the of the year people were saying uh, k3g is the biggest film of the year and then suddenly came gadar which changed yeah, the tides yeah. in that year and that added immense pressure on you you know that year himesh um and i'd like to share this with everyone it's you know the lessons you get in um, in life can really ground you um and i feel like that year for me was very critical not for me just as a filmmaker but for me as a human being i feel very strongly that you know when you start flying there is sometimes destiny or sometimes circumstances way of saying that you know uh stay in your place because success and failure both can happen in your life and you know when you get success easily there is still a struggle uh to maintain it or to achieve it uh that year in the beginning of the year for some reason i was like um i was like i'm making the biggest film of the year like what's going to get bigger than this i'm go- i'm going to sweep all the awards in my head these were all my thoughts i wasn't saying it loud but i was thinking it and i was very front footed and then i saw lagan um in june uh when it released and i walked out and i was like 
I think I've seen a cinematic marvel. Like I feel it'll be Down in the Ages is one of the best feature films ever made. I was blown away by it and I was I was like mine is like nothing of then I saw Gaddar the next day and I went crazy about its commercialness and its its solidness and the audience was going crazy and then I saw Lagan again it, and the cricket it, the theater became a cricket stadium then I was like I took a break and I was like okay now I went back to my film then I went and saw Chandni Ba and it was one of the most respected films of the year wonderful then i saw dil chahta and i had kind of grown up with farhan and i was like he was a naughty bratty kid i was like are ye ye kya banayega yaar uh, and and i went to see dil chahta and i was like oh my god i thought i was cool with that cool chain uh, i'm like far from cool what is really cool is dil chahta hai genuinely the cool syntax of cinema started from dil chahta hai by the end of it i was like from becoming the front footed filmmaker i felt like i was the underdog and then kabhi khushi kabhi gham release and we had really bad reviews like really? everyone was like old wine new bottle same thing churned over and i was actually really depressed when it released um i remember there was a cr- trade uh, critic who um, there were only two or three critics in those days trade analysts um, and he gave a really bad review to the film uh, and he wrote at the end um, overall the film will disappoint all concerned and i was like i remember reading and my friend came in to my it was saturday evening and i was like my film's going to flop like it's going to flop like he has said it that he knows the numbers like it's going to flop what's going on instead of taking me like you know somewhere to kind of get fresh air he took me to a psychic uh, and and the psychic is pulling cards out for me and i'm crying and i'm like what's going to happen and then i call anil thadani who was my who's a massive distributor producer and exhibitor and uh, i called him and he was like karan are you going crazy this is pre eid just wait for monday you know uh, when your eid holiday kicks in on monday you'll see those days we've only single screens right so it was a big impact when you released before on during the ramzan time um and on monday i said uh, what what do i have to expect is on monday if your advance is good for the second week that means you're home so i was like i did a took a mannat i walked to a temple uh, i was very dramatic in my head i was like my god if this film flops what am i going to do because my dad had told me if this film flops we'll have to go back to our old house because we put all our money into this film whatever we made on kuch kuch hota hai and imagining us like you know my mother and my father and me with suitcases leaving that ghar you know that <laughs> that hindi film scene ke you know you know you're turning around and background music is very sad and you're looking at that last and i was visualizing all this and i reached uh, liberty um, you know the lane of liberty is next to bombay hospital liberty is where the film yeah. was playing and there was a, like a massive traffic jam you know and i was like getting very anxious because anil tarani was meeting me at the cinema and i just turned around and i said uh, to someone i said ye traffic kyu hai you know he said are advance booking ka line hai so i was like what uh, i said kis picture ke liye he said are ye family picture bani hai kabhi kuch kabhi kaam and he was very irritated himself because he was also stuck in the traffic and like in high speed you've seen those heroines run na? um like i have run like that like through the traffic literally to anil dadani and he took me to the houseful board and it was all houseful for week 2 and i was like so then the film is a hit he said call all the distributors now he saying your film is a massive hit so i was like oh god okay so i called everybody barring the punjab distributor who said ha bahut badi hit hai lekin gaddar jaisi nahi hai so i was like theek hai bhaiya number 2 to hai na wo main main seh lunga but flop to nahi hai ise nahi kya bol rahe ho sare full shows ja rahe hai so i was like oh my god thank god but then you know the award season which i had so enjoyed with kuch kuch and i won no award for kabhi kuch kabhi kaam i was even nominated for a couple i think uh, that was like a really grounding experience for me i fell back uh, you know back on my feet and realized and that life lesson that i learned still keeps me on stead today because i realized that you've got to just work and don't expect anything from the beginning because there's no replacement to hard work nothing else but so through the 25 years you have made seven films You have a hundred percent track record. Seven hit films. When you look back at all the seven films, is there anything which surprised you the most? It was uh, not surprising, but I was a bit like um, taken aback with the moral policing for Kabhi Alvida Na Kena. Uh, I thought that I was making an unusual subject. It was about infidelity, and you know, um, I was also deconstructing Shah Rukh's. uh absolutely pure image you know and you know showing the gray side of life thursday night i went to see it was a preview at ad labs um and 
there was a scene uh, there was a very traditional couple and i was sitting behind them and there was a scene when sharuk and rani check into a hotel room yeah. you know so there was this lady who looked at her husband like that and he said dream sequence che so <laughs> so she got pacified with the fact that ye dream sequence hai aise ho hi nahi sakta na they can't really step outside the boundary of their marriage when they realized it was not a dream sequence nahi nati che uh, uh they all they both got up took their families and walked out and i was like oh my god the reality of like you know judgment hit me and then when i stepped out there was a lady and her daughter was crying in on the corner you know so i thought she was very moved by the film but the mother came to me and she looked at me she said tu karan jo hai to i said ji he said meri beti na abhi abhi uska divorce hua hai aur maine bola mood theek karne ke liye main tujhe karan jo ki picture dikhaungi aur tune ye picture thi banayi hai aise banate picture so i was like ye hote hai hamare sanskar i was like uh, i was like i was like uh, by that time i realized that the film had done phenomenally overseas but in india it had done good business not great business but i realized that there was such a divided house on kabhi alvida so when you said i was surprised i was not surprised i was more disappointed actually and then i went within and and realized that you know that no matter when when you make a film that hits home sometimes whether it's was kabhi alvida then or gehraiya today it'll always have this this polarized response and i was so used to getting just love that the polarization really threw me off but how do you deal with the appreciation and criticism and has it changed evolved over the years right from the day of your debut till now it's always stressful imesh um Ours is the only business that is judged on a Friday by each and every one. And the time that I am coming from, there was no social media. Yeah. To now, where everyone is a critic, yeah. everyone. The critics are critics. The regular audience are critics. People start meeting me in like my own building and say, "Hundred crore karegi," and I'm like, "You? I mean, like they asked me that question when Bombay talkies was releasing. I'm like, how can Bombay talkies do hundred crores? I mean, like, like please think and when you are, I said, uncle, sir, I thought ke, you know, like you know, like I, it's not easy to achieve business like that. and you get trolled you get massively um, criticized or praised but everything is there for you like everyone youtubers are reviewing uh, instagrammers real pe- reeler like everyone is giving you their comments on the film so i come from the school where i watch everything because i believe that's the only way you should be aware of the ground reality because many filmmakers and actors i believe live in like 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 their own bubble and when you live in a bubble there's no way that you will find out that what really the audience thinks of your film so i i have become resilient and grown a thick skin now because god knows that people say some really terrible things about me and i'm like god you don't know me i'm not half as bad as you think and there's one snake emoji that keeps popping up i don't know why uh when my name comes and like and i'm like i've seen all the trolling i've seen it all um and i've just like said that okay you know this is like an occupational hazard it's part um and parcel of what what you are because people who don't have faces and names sometimes tend to just take out their day's anger on somebody yeah. and sometimes they have a perception of who you are without really knowing who you are you know they believe it off you and they create that perception and then they attack you um i've grown to kind of realize it's okay you know i've realized that now i take it with a tinge of humor i even laugh at some of the things people say are quite creative even when they when they're trolling you actually they're doing it quite creatively some of the memes are hilarious i see everything like i i realized that i shouldn't be an isolated filmmaker i should be an inclusive filmmaker and read everything and i do and i, I think that's the way you grow as well when you learn yeah. from whatever yeah. especially when it's constructive so yeah well who knows what's really constructive really um <laughs> most of the time i don't i'm not sure it's constructive <laughs> criticism uh but like there are a few critics that i take seriously that i uh, that i read but the others also i read and i love some of the youtubers they're quite hilarious um and they get really angry when they don't like your film like you know they start screaming loudly uh and i'm like but aren't you mic'd like <laughs> like why are you screaming and then 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 there are suddenly people outside like cinema halls who have become self proclaimed critics and like and i see everything can say you know of the filmography that of the films that you have directed most of them actually all of them have family emotions drama comedy but one film which stands out for me is my name is khan that is unlike anything that you have made how did my the subject of my name is khan come your way it was actually started uh I was in um, a dinner with people um, in New York, actually, and um, very educated. Some of them were college 
uh, friends of mine some of them are friends of mine in new york all educated in some ivy league schools and colleges uh, some of them investment bankers some of them from the bay area you know from it zones and evolved educated intelligent people and they were saying some really um, to me inappropriate things about the about what i believe is the misconception of a religion and i and i looked at them and i said i cannot believe all you educated people are saying stupid things like this i was like and i walked home to my i walked to my hotel it was many blocks down and i was like you know i felt very strongly that i had to tell a story that came from my core and it was about about misconceptions about what we believe and what it truly is um and then my research started on my name is khan and shibani batija actually who wrote the screenplay story um uh of the film she helped me with the research we went to lots of institutions in you know post 911 there was a totally different world that we were dealing with and there were so many stories and actually my name is khan is based on a slightly uh, a true story of course which was we then you know exaggerated and and took the liberties cinematically but it actually has its origin in a true story about someone we couldn't speak about because the family was not um not comfortable with us talking about this particular person but he had said to his wife that you know I'm going to go and find the president of America and say my name is Khan and I'm not a terrorist and um and uh, and Shivani who beautifully brilliantly and diligently worked on the screenplay she did massive research because I felt that it was out of my depth as a, a, a writer you know i needed that support system and she gave it to me like it's entirely her baby as a writer and i felt it was the most i was the wrongest casting as director but i took it up as a challenge because i feel like the more uncomfortable you are the more you will push yourself because sometimes when you when you lie in a comfort zone you tend to get complacent I was in a very uncomfortable zone as a filmmaker my name is Khan and I had to prove to myself that if you push me to a terrain that I'm not comfortable with I can perhaps still deliver um it was the most challenging film for me uh you know to actually direct because you have to understand so much about the condition uh you know first and then the climate and uh, and had to be hyper sensitive about the projection and portrayal because you're dealing with a sensitive subject um it was the toughest film for me to direct I have to say Was Shahrukh sir and Kajol ma'am surprised when you came to them and narrated the subject? Yes. Um both of them. I mean like both asked me um you know that this is an interesting and an exciting choice. But they were so on board with it because um I think it was the belief that three of us had built over a period of so many films. I remember Rajkumar Hirani sir once said that he was planning Munna Bhai Chale America which was based on a similar subject and then came My Name Is Khan he saw it he loved it. Yeah. and then eventually that led him to even stalling the film yeah did he ha- ever have a conversation with you on the similarities ke no he just we just spoke at uh, at uh, we met at an event and he said are i didn't realize that you were telling a similar story you know and and he i know his munna bhai chale america was similarly about something like this but like i don't know the details of that sir but yes we had a conversation about it so you know i think your friendship with sharukh khan I think it would be 30 years you know him since 30 32 93 94 30 yeah 30 years I met him on the sets of Karan Arjun for the first time in uh, 1993 30 years basically yeah, yeah do you remember the first ever conversation that you had with him yes uh on the sets of uh, Karan Arjun uh, my dad took me because my dad was offering him duplicate yeah. at that time and they were discussing dates and monies etc and kajal was on that set they were shooting the song jati hu main um and i ca- remember calling kajal i said i'm coming with my father i don't know anyone um you know at least you'll be there you know so she said yeah yeah i'm there and, and you know so i went but the time i reached she was giving her shot so she was busy and sharukh was wearing this bright orange levi shirt i still remember and you know you had built a perception and heard about movie stars and how they are and um I had this impression that movie stars are a certain way and like was, my father was a producer and he had dealt with many um and Shahrukh there was a lot of talk that he's actually a uh, kind of like um arrogant uh, and like that he was not arrogant like he was like the word is like he was like he knew what he was doing and he comes from uh, drama and theater and all that but in one minute I was just swept away by the magic of Shahrukh Khan because he was not only just charming chatty He kept asking me questions about my school and college. He was so personable, and he looks into your eye and speaks to you. And that is the most beautiful part about Shahrukh is that when he's with you, he's present with you. He doesn't 
he doesn't give a damn about who you are and where you come from it's just you and when he's talking to you he's really looking into your eyes and speaking to you and genuinely wanting to know and i in 5 minutes i think had become a fan like i was like like oh my god like this is the most amazing human being i think i've ever met he was magical like you know it's like and i feel like most people who haven't met shahrukh khan have missed out because that is like that moment and it remains still today we are 30 years a deep family friendship and even now when i speak to him he's magnetic he's majestic of course but he's magnetic uh, that is not the first time do i met shahrukh khan uh i was did a show which i'm very embarrassed about and there's a reel making the rounds called indra dhanush when i was uh, 15 years old um anand mehendu the director called my father and uh, called my mother and said that do you have a very fat son um uh, uh and i was very large i'll say plus size today um i was very very plus sized um and my mother was of course very defensive and she said no he has puppy fat it will go uh, uh but uh he wanted a very plus sized person for his serial called indra dhanush um so i went to his office um to audition because it was summer holidays i just done my 10th standard and there was somebody sitting right opposite me doing the crossword and drinking tea we sat for a couple of hours because anand uh, was busy ed- editing he sat i sat we just stared at each other once or twice and i continued just staring into space because i didn't know what to i was so stressed first time i'm going like it's all new for me anand walked out and went to this person and said that okay so we're making this show called indra dhanush and he's like you know no i just came to tell you that i don't want to do tv anymore i want to do film but i really like the tea in your office and i wanted to finish the crossword and he walked out he left and anand said like how strange was that i'm i'm like i find i said i found him for video who is he so he said his name is shahrukh khan and he did forgy so i said yeah yeah right right he was in forgy that's why and then the rest was like he was in the show and akshay anand at that time did that same role that shahrukh was meant to do it's so bizarre because when i met shahrukh many years later um i told him and he remembered he said acha it was you who were sitting opposite me he said because we literally faced each other in a tiny room for four hours without speaking to each other but who knew at that point that this particular incident and this particular moment will be so defining for me in my career since then the rest like 30 years of journey with him it, it has been magical i'm i'm sure so you know rocky or rani ki prem kahani when you talk of that film uh <laughs> I think everyone over here the Gen Z has seen uh, the film I think yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you talk of that film you have directed seven films which include student of the year as well every film has had a shahrukh khan association student of the year was produced by him were you ever tempted at any time oh very to have a cameo in rocky run like you know uh, the entire ad team and i think some of them are here will say that in tum kya mile uh, they said the best moment should be like you track away from uh Ali and Ranveer and just go to Shahrukh and Kajal singing the same song and they they look at them and you know Ali realizes that this is pure love because they represent love and i was like with what kind of guts do i have to go and ask <laughs> Shahrukh to not only do a cameo but to come to Kashmir to get into air costume and, and plus we i had already you know Shahrukh never says no to me and he um i have to pick and choose what i ask for like i remember when we went as a team to ask him to play that massive impactful cameo in brahmastra at the end of the day he looked at us and he said it's karan and i i i can never say no i know that i can't take that empowered feeling for granted i can't keep going back you know i remember even in adil i knew that who else but sharukh could say ek tarfa ki uh, pyar ki taakat hi kuch aur hoti hai i was like aur kaun bolega aur kaun bol sakta hai you know इसमें सिर्फ मेरा हक है सिर्फ मेरा एंड आई वॉज लाइक यू नीड द किंग टू रिसाइड दोज डायलॉग्स यू नो सो आई वॉज लाइक हुज नाउ एन एम्प्रो बाई द वे आई आई टोल्ड एम आई सर नाउ वी हैव टू जस्ट लाइक कॉल यू एम्प्रो खान नाउ दैट्स दैट्स द न्यू नेम एंड आई वॉज लाइक आई वेंट एंड आस्ट मी सर येस वेंट ऑन ब्रह्मास्त्र ही सर येस आई हीज नेवर सेट नो आई सेट सो आई हैव टू पिक एंड चूज uh my favors so i thought this one i let it go i won't go because i'll be so embarrassed to ask yet again because you know he gave us on brahmastra nearly 12 to 14 days uh didn't charge a penny just was there with full love and full just energy and i'm like that's what that's it he he's king sized hearted as well more than anything else we have heard so many stories about the king hearted nature of his like yeah. even when i met him it was amazing experience mm. so you know someone recently tweeted that bnc for karan johar film is in the overseas market 
you are one of the very few filmmakers who has a strong audience base in the international market when was the first time that you felt the love internationally and what according to you has led to that connect i think it was uh, uh, the first time that i went um, to london and to a theater called at called um, it was in feltham cine world at feltham um, it's where a bulk of the asian community comes and i watched k3g and i went in and there was a, a gentleman called andrew who ran the chain and he was like i'm very excited to meet you who's this director who's made it to top 3 of the uk box office with harry potter and lord of the rings in the same uh, and you're number 3 and and he's saying there are queues in the cold to come to see this film and and when i went to the theater it was like they were reacting to everything like you know when there's a scene when kajal says वापस चलो राहुल ये ना हमारा देश है ना हमारे लोग हैं एंड दे ऑल स्टूड अप एंड क्लैप्ड एंड आई वाज लाइक आई वाज लाइक यू ऑल रियली वांट टू लीव देन व्हाई यू हियर बिकॉज़ दे वर ऑल लाइक द इमोशन वाज सो स्ट्रांग एंड इट वाज सो एंड आई वाज लाइक सो आई वाज सो ओवरवेल्म्ड विद दैट फीलिंग आई थिंक इट वाज इन दैट पॉइंट दैट आई रियलाइज दैट देयर वाज सम काइंड ऑफ कनेक्शन दैट द फिल्म्स हैड हैड विद द डायस्पोरा एंड आई रियली फील ग्रेटफुल फॉर द लव दैट कम्स बिकॉज़ इवेंचुअली एवरीवन इज फ्रॉम आवर कंट्री and you know sometimes they're disconnected uh, geographically but their connection is still so deep and i think it's the value system in the films that actually connects with them and you know helps us achieve the numbers <laughs> so this is a question i usually ask the actors but i think it is more relevant for you than anyone else you are friends with almost everyone in the film industry and every actor every person who is working over here wants to do a dharma film or a karan johar directorial how difficult does it get for you to say no to actors when they come to you and say that we want to do this film but you feel it is someone else who fits the fits the bill uh, uh i mean you know actually i haven't worked with a lot of people uh a lot of actors i worked with sharukh in in over 5 films um as as director and as producer more than that um i then worked with ranbir uh, before that with varun and sid who the first film it was then with ranbir and now ranbir so i actually haven't had the massive opportunity of working with a lot of actors but because we produce many films i've interacted and worked with many stars um you know i have a very um i have very genuine relationships with all of them so every time i've never been in an awkward moment where an actor has come and say i want to be in a film but i've gone to someone else it's never happened because uh, i think everybody knows your reasons right uh, for going to who you go to and uh, i still want to work with so many of them because i feel like as a director i still haven't worked with a lot of actors you know um uh, even when i directed um, ranbir it was like for the first time i had ever worked with a movie star beside sharukh khan yeah. you know and when i worked with ranveer it was again it was a, a rare experience for me but a wonderful one uh, when i directed alia on rocky rani i felt i'd never directed her before because the alia on sund of the year was a different actor yeah. the alia bhat who faced the camera as rani chatterjee yes. in rocky rani was like i was like who taught you to be this brilliant like it wasn't me like it wasn't me i have no i have absolutely Uh, and I, and alia told me uh, not to praise her a lot but because we get trolled for that a lot that you know every time i i praise alia bhat it's like oh he goes on and on about alia bhat now what to do uh, you know you're, you she's like my first yeah. born in many ways so like i have like pride for her but i always say like student of the year was her professional launch her emotional launch but her true career launch is highway you know i think that's that that truly is what cemented her career as an artist um it wasn't student of the year i promise i taught her nothing uh, i taught her how to like maybe look glamorous but that wasn't the prerequisite to being a great artist so when i directed her and i was like oh my god like she's fantastic and i don't know how this happened like she's just become this fantastic actor 2022 was not really a good year for the industry now 2023 the tides have changed then how yeah. be right from pathan to uh, gadar oh my god jawan rocky rani ki prem kahani dream girl fukri and so many more having observed the trends of trends with regards to the kind of content that is working how, as a producer what do you think has changed in the last 3 years oh god loaded um so i think pre pandemic there were certain kind of films that were definitely exciting an audience that were genre, that were either specifically um not tent pole or big yeah, event action films but very substance oriented films i think a lot of that has changed post pandemic uh, those that are completely substance based and message based or probably emotional dramas human dramas love stories perhaps have been so actively streamed like when you go on to any of the streaming services there's so much of that kind of content thrillers you know that people are 
I don't think investing their time and money in cinema halls. So for cinema halls to get their those bums on seats, I think the big tentpole films or the films that really actually um, have like crazy word of mouth from day one. Um, but that's tough. It's become tough. So everything that has worked has been an event film. Uh, Jawan, Pathan, Gaddar, uh, even Dream Girl is a sequel. Fukre is a sequel. So sequels have also the sequels that the first parts and second parts were really appreciated. Uh, for us, I think Rocky Rani worked purely on the strength of its word of mouth. Um, we didn't open to a grand number, uh, but I think the film got the love, and that's why it just went on doing the business it did. Um, and Ranveer and Alia got so much love. And here I have to take a beat and just say, before I get into that, working with Ranveer Singh was just an amazing, exhilarating experience. Like he is, a, he's a juggernaut of talent. Like he is just something else, uh, like a chameleon. Like he can go from Khilji to Murad to like, like to literally to to Rocky to Kapil Dev. I mean, like, like you, you know. And then Deepika tells me like, like. Every six months, a new person walks into the house, like you know, uh, because he becomes that character. Like he would talk like Rocky throughout. Like he just start. He in his conversations with me, I was talking to Rocky Randhawa. I was not talking to Ranveer Singh. He would say like you know, uh, uh, how's you? And like he would call me and say uh, Ranveer Singh this side. And like everything was like, and I was like, oh God, like I'm not being able to have a normal conversation with this man. But he never left that character. Yeah. It was phenomenal. Um, I had to just say it because I'm so grateful for him yeah. and the film. But going back to your question, so yeah, so I mean, we have to walk on on a tie, on thin ice right now when we plan our films. Uh, to make sure that they their syntax is theatrical. Do you believe that there's this entire narrative on social media about the concept of superstars? Do you believe franchises and IPs are the new superstars, and there are not enough superstars we have? I mean, I think your film is your superstar. You know, I think you've got even if you have a superstar, your film's got to work. You know, we know that Shah Rukh Salman, Akshay, Ritik, Ajay. They're all massive superstars, and in younger generation, we have so many of them. Uh, Shah Rukh has proven this year that you know that that he's befitting of that glorious crown. Look at the numbers; they're fantastic. Like I've never dreamt of. I mean, I think I'd go mad if I saw these numbers coming out of a film I made. But it's like I'm so proud that it's Shah Rukh. Uh, but yes, eventually the film is a superstar. There's no bigger superstar than the film itself. And so when you when we talk of Rocky or Rani ki prem kahani, I know that. Uh, there was a lot of pressure around the film before the release because you know like you said franchises and tentpole films were happening w what was the moment when you realized that okay we have made it the first day fantastic reviews everyone is talking about the film the performance and slowly the audience word of mouth kicked in and the film went where it had to but when was it where you felt that okay we have made it a uh, original hindi language film non franchise has gone and uh i was very stressed i think i was going to have a cardiac arrest um uh the the week uh, before and the days following that, um, I don't think anyone anyone who knows me closely will know that. When I mean stressed, it was physically like my body was like shivering and shaking. Like I was like, I felt like I really seeked the validation with this film. It's been it was a seven year gap, and a three year a three year tough time. You know, with the trolling, the anxiety had built. Um, there was a lot of negativity that surrounded. Uh, me personally, as well as the industry, and uh, it wasn't easy on me or my my mom. Um, it was a tough time for us as a family when we had to combat it. I don't feel like I should put so much focus on success in general, but this time I felt I didn't need the success as much as I needed the validation that I'm still a relevant filmmaker that can talk to an audience today. Somehow, even if I felt it, I needed to believe it and I needed to see it. The proof lies in the pudding, um, and I needed to know that all the trolling was just virtual noise it's not really true that if an audience really loves you they will come if they like your film they will come uh, they won't judge you for by perception but i needed himesh for me to really see that because and that had built this ball of anxiety and i was just like and there were literally there were times that tears were just rolling down my face because I, but on friday and then saturday i don't think i've ever received this kind of love filmmakers actors like were calling me like audiences were reaching out to me from everywhere people were telling me they were going back to see the film uh, i've never felt so respected as a filmmaker and i've always had this not angst well this feeling like i i, I don't think i think they don't take me as seriously as they should uh, but i felt like serious filmmakers were calling me serious actors were messaging me and you know really revered and respected actors were like this is great like make more like this you know this had the best messaging and yet entertaining and like I was by Monday. I was like, okay, I think we are kind of walking home, 
uh, we'll get there. But I think I feel we can celebrate it from now onwards. So it was the Monday of the release that I really I took my first breath, uh, and uh, it felt so good. I can't tell you. So when we speak of Dharma Productions, what are the IPs and franchises that you want to create going going forward? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to plan these things, you know. Uh, I feel like you have some. That's yeah, yeah. We have. I mean, uh, we do want to make a Dulhania. Uh, we do want to do that uh, at some point. I hope that we do. It's uh, a love story franchise that actually doesn't exist. Uh, it's only us that made it. Humpty Badri, and now we are looking forward to making another Dulhania. Um, we are creating as we speak a couple, which I don't want to reveal at that point unless you break the story. Uh, 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 which sometimes shocks all of us. We're like, how the hell did he find out? Like, who's 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 the pink villa mole in Dharma Productions? We are creating, but I I, I go by stories much more than because I feel like many people make projects, um, and those never result in good films. I think we have to make a franchise only when it's a good story, but not by just the the fact that it's a two or three or four. Um, you know, I think not everything should be a two. You know, uh, just by adding two to something doesn't make it. While sometimes commercially. I'm given that advice. Uh, it doesn't always come organically for me, though I will do it, and I will do it for commercial reasons. But many a time, I wonder, like, is this being fair to an audience? You know, because I feel like you're just adding two to one, but I doesn't really need a two. You know, make another film with another title. It's so great. But I know the world does it. Hollywood does it. We're doing it. It's been successful. Um, my belief is, if a story needs to continue, only then it. I've been asked so many times that, oh, why can't you make K three G two? And you know, I'm like, that story was what it was. It ended there. You know, so I don't know. I, my faith is more in stories than in numbers and franchises. I think in 2022, you announced that you want to direct an action film. Yes. Is that? Are you working on that? Are you planning to make it someday? Someday? Or is it your next? As a, I mean. Let's just say that what I, I I normally when I announce something I mean it. <laughs> that would be interesting, I think. I mean, see, to me, um, not that I'm talking about my, anything yeah. that I'm doing in specific. When I mean action, I believe action is also a result of an emotion. Yeah. Just fighting for no reason is a film that will go nowhere. Yeah. I think motivationally, the action comes from a strong place of emotion. And emotion is something that I love to project. So for me, action is a subset. Emotion is the the front star. Yeah. You know, so if I can crack that narrative where the emotion is front and center, then the action will follow beautifully. And then it's a function of getting the great talents that exist in India and the rest of the world to kind of, you know, I just don't. I I don't. One thing is like, uh, while popcorn is great, but uh, making just a popcorn action film is not something that I would be excited by. And before we move on to fan questions, this is a question which if I don't ask, a lot of people on Twitter would be angry. 25 years back, you teamed up with Salman for the first time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and since then, there has not been a collaboration. There have been multiple instances where conversations happen, but things didn't materialize. I believe that is finally happening. Could you tell us something? What it is? Is it happening? How? Uh... So the thing is, um, I have to tell you that uh, I have the deepest respect for Salman and his entire family. My father was very close to Salim Saab. And I told you how Salman said yes to the film. Like he said it on the basis of the fact that he loved my dad. And, and that has never left my heart. Um, all I can say at this moment is that uh, that relationship will hopefully find a celluloid space very soon. Okay, so hopefully announcements. I'm not yeah. saying it, I'm not denying it. I'm just not because I'm like, I, I, I'm superstitious about certain things, you know. So <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I should just like say it when the time is right. And one last thing, Karan sir. Uh, 25 years in the industry, you have seen it all. What is it that is there on your bucket list? What is it that you aspire to do going forward? You know, when I began my career, there were a couple of artists who were on my bucket list. One of them was... Mr. Rishi Kapoor, who I directed in Student of the Year and produced with Kapoor and Sons and Agnipath. One of them was working with Mr. Bachchan, who I had the pleasure of directing twice. One of them was who I'm a crazy fan of, Lata Ji, and she sang for me a uh, title song of Kabhi Kushi Kabhi Gam. One of them was working with, with the late Sri Devi. Um, I feel like that was a desire that, that unfortunately went unfulfilled. Um, I have no as no dream that I feel hasn't been realized. But what I do and what I tell everyone is like, 
every day i make a new dream for myself and that dream could be a story to tell um an expansion plan for my studio or a relationship that i want to enhance my dreams are not restricted to just the movies they're also restricted to like i dreamt of having children and when i had them i feel like that was one of my most beautiful dreams that were fructified and now i dream for them so my dreams are so um they they have my dreams have also um taken a leap and they've gone more from just professional but also to personal now when i wake up every day i dream new dreams for myself but i also dream big dreams for my children thank you so much karan sir for doing this conversation i hope you liked it yeah thank you i had a great time thank you so much thank you for everyone for being here thank you just thank you from the bottom of my heart thank you and 25 years done looking forward to another 25 years celebrating cinema celebrating your films yeah. and everything thank you thank, thank you himesh thank you Golden Jubilee, okay, okay. Hopefully, inshallah, we'll meet again.